Hi, this is Josh Haftel with another video for the all-new Lightroom CC. In this video, we're going to be covering the healing and selective tools found inside of Lightroom CC, and we'll show you how you can use those tools to be able to take an image such as this one and go from here in the before image to here with the enhancements applied. To start off with, let me revert back to original. You can see I've done that here, and this is the starting point. This is the straight out of camera, as they say. And let's talk a little bit about what we want to do and why. So this character was an individual that we ran into while walking down some alleyways in Havana. Uh, he had a lot of swagger, a lot of character, a lot of charisma, and we wanted to take his photo, and he was happy enough to oblige. But he was also kind of in a hurry. He didn't really want to sit around forever and while we cleaned the scene, so to speak. So we just got no more than a couple minutes with him to take his photo, and that was enough but it also resulted in an image that had some distractions. So let's talk about how we can use some of these tools inside of Lightroom CC to clean up some of these distractions. So the first thing that I wanna do is let's use the healing tool to go through and clean up some parts of the image that, that don't actually help tell the story that we wanna have. So first of all, you know, he's sitting in a really interesting tub and it's a bathtub that they cut away and they put into some cement but I don't really want to tell the story about a guy sitting in a bathtub. The, the bathtub is not really part of the story. Um, and so like the drain at the bottom, uh, you know, to his right hand or the lower left of the image doesn't really help that much. So I'm going to use the healing tool and I'm going to go in and what I'm doing right now is I'm using my mouse wheel. So either if you've got a mouse wheel, you can use that scroll up and down. Or if you're using a touchpad, you can use a two-finger swipe, just like if you were scrolling up and down inside of a web page. And that's going to make your brush bigger and smaller. And that's a really easy and fast way of being able to, to take the object that you want to um, remove and make the brush the right size for it. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap once to indicate that that's the area that I want to affect and you can see that now it's it's gone in and it's automatically identified an area that it wants to use as the source for that um, and I can actually adjust that if I want to so if you just click and drag on the source you can see I can drag it around and if, if for some reason I didn't like the original source that it selected I can pick a different source by just dragging it and what I want to do though is I want to zoom in so I'm holding the space bar to switch to the zoom and I'm going to click over here and I can even zoom in one more time if I wanted to and let's just pan around and I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm looking at so if I hit the H key it'll actually hide the overlay I hit the H key again it'll bring it back all right let's go back to where we had just moved that and so I'm going to zoom in here and take a look at what it is that we're seeing and in order to see the effect without this uh, white circle in the way, if you hit the O key on your keypad, you'll see that it hides the overlay. And what this lets me do is it lets me see the result. Now I can see a little bit of this uh, transition inside of the image. You can see around the edges, it's a little bit soft and I can, I can tell because I know as the photographer that there was something there. But what's really interesting to think about is that if you didn't point that out to somebody, most people wouldn't even know about it. So of course, you can go in and you can refine more and more if you want to. Um, but one thing that I found is that ask yourself or even ask a friend if you need to, can you see anything wrong with this image? Because we can spend far too much time trying to refine and refine and refine and improve on things that nobody would ever even notice. And it's kind of a little tip that I think about and I tell a lot of students, uh, don't get too fixated on the little details that nobody would notice because otherwise what you're doing is you're basically spending a lot of time that doesn't really have much value. So the next thing I can do, zoom in over here and I'm going to pan down to this area over here. And again, some things that, that don't really uh, help the story are like this little white crack. And I'm going to like just scroll down a little bit and create a smaller healing brush and I'm going to just paint that in. So you can do both a single tap that will select an area or you can draw an area like that. And I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to hit that O key again to show where it's selecting it from. And now this is where I have the ability to go in and select a different area that I want to be in the image. So for example, if I select from over here, and let's zoom back in again and let's take a look at that O key to get rid of the overlay and you know it's a lot better so I can actually adjust the original area that I painted in and move it around boom so let's hit that O key and let's hit the uh, backslash key to see before and after 
And you can tell again, what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get rid of things that are distracting away from the subject. And again, that subject in this image is definitely this gentleman here. So I think that looks good. I mean, that's enough healing to go through and, and clean up some of those areas that I found to be distracting. I really want people to be looking directly at the subject, right at his face, at his expression. Before I go into the healing tools, there's one thing I notice is I actually do like to do a little bit of tweaking to the image. Uh, let's just take this contrast slider up just a little bit. Uh, let's add a little bit of the shadows to the image. Maybe uh, pump up the vibrance just ever so slightly. Boom, there we go. Looks good. Uh, let's take a look at that before and after. Really subtle amount of contrast, but I think it looks a lot better already. So now I can use some of the selective tools. Now we've got three different selective tools. We've got the brush, we've got the linear gradient, and we've got the radial gradient. So these three different tools can be really useful in a lot of different scenarios. As you can imagine, the brush lets me go in and paint a very, very selective mask just exactly on the areas that I want to. The linear gradient will actually draw a line, and so it will uh, create a transition from one side to another in a very straightforward way. What I find to be really helpful in almost all portrait images is the radial gradient. So let's open up the radial gradient, and let's go ahead and use that to click and drag. And what you're seeing now is that I'm dragging this little oval on the image. And because I had already applied some enhancement before, you'll see that being affected there. But what I can do now is I can tell it, do I want to affect the inside or outside of this radial gradient that I just described? So that's what this invert button over here does. The invert button lets me do the inside of that selection. And you can see now I can drag that over to the right and you'll see that it's affecting just the inside of that radial gradient, or I can do the outside of that radial gradient. And in this particular case, what I find to be really helpful is I want to make the subject stand out more. And one of the ways of doing that is by darkening the background. So what I can do now is I can drag these little areas over here to make that bigger, and I can move it around and maybe bring it in just a little bit more. And this feather tool over here, what it's going to do is it's going to help you describe how sharp or soft of a transition from the area that's being affected to the area that's not being affected. So with the uh, feather at zero, you can see it's a very hard transition. Uh, with the feather at 100, it's a very, very soft transition. And this is, again, something that you would just do to taste, figure out what works right for the image. And something like that looks about right to me. I'm going to drag it down here. And I'm going to bring that in just a little bit because we really want to draw attention to the uh, subject. And one thing that I find that I really uh, like to do is to do something uh, really, really strong and then back it off. So you can see that I've done a lot of this darkening of the background. And I don't want it to be so, so obvious. I don't want it to look like I had uh, brought in some kind of really big lighting rig. I do want it to feel still like it's a natural lighting scenario where I, I just took the available light with my camera but I want to be able to shape and mold that light just a little bit to add that depth and dimension again to the image. So as I'm going through this, a lot of times I will hit this before and after key. So that's what the backslash key, and you're seeing that I'm, I'm getting a little bit closer into what it is that I wanna do on the image. And you can see that he's definitely stepping away from the background because we're darkening the background, which makes it him the brightest object in the image, means that he feels like he's stepping forward or adding some dimensionality. In general, when we see darker objects, our, our brain tends to put those darker objects behind lighter objects. So that makes it feel like he's actually uh, in a more three-dimensional world. So that looks good to me. I'm, I think that we're already getting pretty good. And so now I feel like the image already has a, a lot of improvement over it. You can see again that I've, I've gotten from here to here. So let's take a look at another image. So I'm going to hit the G key on my keyboard to open up one of the images we were working on before, which was this one, to talk about the selective brush. In this image that we were working on before, we had worked on it globally to affect all of the uh, colors and details and tonality throughout the image, but we noticed that there was still a little bit of darkness uh, on the gentleman's face. This hat uh, was casting too much of a shadow, so we were losing some of the texture, some of the detail, some of the... Um, you know, the, the little things that we use to, to tell it's a human, it's a face. I mean, obviously we know that, but just being able to see a little bit of the outline of the eyes uh, and nose and mouth might be helpful. So I'm going to zoom in over here on this image, 
and I'm going to select the paintbrush. And what I can start doing is we can start off with the tools on the paintbrush to see what it is that we can do. So we can take the size slider and make it bigger and smaller. And of course, just like we were doing with the healing brush, the uh, mouse wheel or scroll on your touchpad will make that bigger and smaller. The feather is going to go in and it's going to make the edge and transition bigger and smaller. And I, I tend to leave that one all the way over to the right. The flow control is going to affect how quickly the paint is coming out. So you can imagine if you want to paint a little bit, you can just put a little bit on top of a little bit on top of a little bit. And then finally, the density is going to control exactly what the maximum amount is. So if you only ever want to apply 50% uh, of the brush stroke at a time, um, you can apply 50 and it's just going to always maximize the amount of effect at that 50%. Um, what I find that I like to do um, oftentimes is leave the feather flow and density at 100%. Um, I might take the flow in certain scenarios and, and bring it down and, and we can talk about that. But for the most part, this setting uh, that we see right here is what I like. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, exposure slider and I'm going to drag it up a little bit and I'm going to make the brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to start painting that effect in over here. I'm really pushing the capabilities of my camera. I'm really pushing it so I'm brightening up an area that was super, super dark. And so that makes it noisy. And so we don't want to do that. Now, this is where we get to balance the results out to balance between the amount of noise that I want to, to see in case you're doing what I've done here, which I've taken an image which was super, super dark and I'm brightening it a lot. And being able to balance with the reintroduction of some of that detail that we want to have. And of course, I can add a little bit of brightness in there. I can go scroll down here where it says noise and I can add in noise reduction, which is really nice that I can do this all selectively. So I add in a little noise reduction over here. Um, I can add just a little bit of clarity just to add a little bit more detail. And now what I can do is I noticed that I've painted over some areas a little bit too much. If you hover over the pin for the brush, you'll see a little mask, um, but you can also even visualize it. And I can switch over to the erase option and I can go in and I can just clean up my selection a little bit by using the erase. And this is one of those scenarios in which I might reduce the flow. And so by reducing the flow on the erase, what I'm doing is I'm going to slowly and slowly remove out the effect until I can blend it in. And so this is kind of like a feathering effect. And what I'm doing now is I'm just slightly removing that brush stroke that I applied onto the background so that I can do it and I can just click a couple of times and every time that I click on it, I'm removing a little bit more of that uh, paint stroke. So that way I can see the, the result. Now to see what I've done, I can hit this delete key and you'll see that now this is before I did that uh, brush, brush stroke. And if I hit the undo, you'll add it back in again and it's really subtle. So there's two things that I wanna do now though. I wanna go back in here and I wanna erase a little bit more right from his neck here. And you'll notice that the Paint and Erase mode have their own settings. So you can have a different flow, feather, a density, and even size for the paint versus the erase, which is really helpful because a lot of times what I find is I'll do a lower flow for the erase, but a 100% flow for the paint because this gives me that ability to paint it in and then just slowly, slowly, slowly remove it away. So you see what I'm doing right now is I'm making a bunch of paint strokes just slowly and softly and, and they're just watching it visually until I reach that point in which it feels like it blends in naturally. Because again, what we want to do here is we want to be very, very subtle about the effects that we're doing. We don't want to call too much attention to the enhancements that we're applying to the images. And by adding this paint stroke onto his face, I've added a little bit more texture. I've drawn attention to his cheekbones, to his eyes, to a bit of his mouth and nose, a little bit more structure in it. So it's not just a silhouette. It actually has some of these elements that are really important for us to recognize in terms of a person's face. So these are some of the selective tools and the healing tools available inside of the all-new Lightroom CC. I hope this helped out and see you on another video.